Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Harrison Explained and today we are going to discuss strokes. The common sign and symptoms of stroke is easily memorized by fast, facial weakness, arm weakness, speech abnormality and time sensitive in the way that treatment has to be started as soon as possible. We are going to discuss four major causes of strokes which are also high yield for exams. The first is middle cerebral artery occlusion. Then we have anterior cerebral artery occlusion, internal carotid artery and posterior cerebral artery occlusion. Let us first understand this diagram which I have taken from Harrison's. Remembering the sign and symptoms will be a cakewalk after this. MCA has two branches, penetrating and cortical. Occlusion of any one of these branches doesn't cause any symptoms because of collateral supply. The green area you see is the sensory area and the reddish area is the motor area. You can see that the MCA supplies these areas and thus occlusion will lead to contralateral hemiplegia and hemianesthesia. Also, if you see here, the visual radiation also receives supply from a branch of the MCA and thus if the visual radiation area is affected, you will see homonymous hemianopia. If the dominant hemisphere is involved, global aphasia is seen because both Wernicke's and Broca's area will be involved as you can see in the diagram. And if the non-dominant hemisphere is involved, anosognosia and neglect will be seen. Partial syndromes due to occlusion of any one branch causes weakness of arm or hand or both or facial weakness with Broca's aphasia. Let's move on to anterior cerebral artery occlusion. It also has two branches. Occlusion of the proximal branch is well tolerated because of collateral supply by the anterior communicating artery and MCA. Occlusion of the distal ACA will lead to paralysis and sensory loss of the opposite leg and foot, weakness of the opposite arm because of the supply to the motor cortex and sensory cortex, urinary incontinence because of paracentral lobule involvement and abulia, which means delay in verbal and motor response. The clinical picture of IC occlusion depends on the cause of ischemia. It could be a propagated thrombus, embolism or low flow. If the MCA and ACA both are occluded at the top of ICA, you will see a combination of clinical features like hemiplegia, hemianesthesia and aphasia or anosognosia. With abulia, the ICA also supplies the optic nerve via the ophthalmic artery. In 25% of cases, amaurosis fugax which is a recurrent transient monoocular blindness points towards occlusion of this artery. Patients will mention a horizontal shade which sweeps up or down the field of vision. A high pitched carotid bruit fading into diastole is also associated with tightly stenotic lesions of the ICA. PCA occlusion is due to atheroma or emboli which lodge at the top of basilar artery. Two syndromes are seen in PCA occlusion, P1 and P2. P1 involves the midbrain, subthalamic and thalamic nucleus and P2 involves the temporal and occipital lobes. P1 will have third nerve palsy because of the midbrain involvement with either contralateral ataxia which is known as Claude's syndrome or contralateral hemiplegia which is known as Weber's syndrome. These syndromes are often asked. Involvement of subthalamic nucleus will present as contralateral hemibalismus. Extensive infarction of the midbrain and subthalamus will present as coma, unreceptive pupils and decerebrate rigidity. The thalamic dejerine rossi syndrome consists of contralateral hemisensory loss followed by burning pain in the affected area which persists and is not easily controlled by analgesics. P2 syndrome will present as contralateral homonymous hemianopia without macular sparing. P2 
pedunculer hallucinosis which is a visual hallucination of brightly colored objects is also seen bilateral occlusion of distal pca will produce blindness with preserved pupillary light reaction the patient will be unaware of this blindness and may even deny it which is known as antons syndrome involvement of bilateral visual association area will result in balance syndrome Patients will experience persistence of visual image for several minutes even after shifting to another image which is known as pallinopsia or an inability to create the whole of an image known as asimultanagnosia. Temporal and hippocampal involvement will affect the memory especially if it is in the dominant hemisphere. Alexia without agraphia is also seen. This brings us to the end of strokes. If you like this content, hit the like button. If you are here for the first time, consider subscribing. See you in the next one.